Hi, this is Herb Shiro of the Dr. Bax channel. And everyone has a drawer somewhere in your house, in your apartment, in your office, that looks like the drawer in the corner of the screen. How do you get that organized? Well, if you had a bunch of little boxes, boxes just the right size and perhaps the right shapes for each of those types of things you could get organized. But where do you find all the right boxes, the right sizes, the right shape? Well, if you have a 3D printer, you make them yourself. You create them, you print them, and you don't need expensive software. You don't need specialized designer skills. I'm gonna show you how in minutes you can create boxes with lots of compartments or boxes with one big opening. Stay tuned and let's learn something together. Okay, let's take a look at some of the different types of boxes I was able to produce. Then we're going to go over to the computer and look at how we can use Thingiverse to find boxes like these and to customize them for our particular needs. Let's get started. So this first box is just a big empty box. This was printed in generic gray PLA on my Monoprice MP10 printer basically a Creality CR10 printer. What's different about it is printers use a nozzle to extrude the filament. I've increased the nozzle size on that printer from 0.4 to one millimeter. So it prints very thick lines and therefore it prints very fast. This was produced from scratch. It's the only one here produced from scratch where I went into Tinkercad, a CAD program, a computer-aided design program. They teach to third graders and there are videos on this channel about it. You can see some links to those. And I just created a box. Then you go into your slicer and you tell it to print it in vase mode or in spiralizer mode, depending on the type of slicer you're using. The slicer, once again, is the program that converts from a three-dimensional object to something that can be printed. That feature will turn a solid object into a box. Very, very simple. Now, the rest of these all come from Thingiverse, and they're a variety of very interesting things. This little box is very interesting because it's printed in place on the printer. The hinge is part of the print. It has a little pin that you print separately in order to lock it. When you take it off the printer, it opens and closes. So that's a permanent hinge. This is printed very small, as you can see here, but it's available in pretty much any size you can fit on your printer. Really a very nice little box. This box is quite different. This is uh, created using the customizer program in Thingiverse. We're gonna take a look at that. You tell it how many rows and columns you want, what size box you want, whether you want a lid, and you can print any size box you want that will fit on your printer. Just a very simple box to print. How much does it cost? Well, this is probably about 40 cents or less of plastic. This was printed in PLA, Hatchbox PLA. I'll have a link below. I'm a big fan of Hatchbox PLA. It's very inexpensive. You buy it on Amazon. You can get it the next day if you want it on my Prusa MK3. So on the Prusa printer. Now this box is sort of ugly. It was printed on a my high-speed printer, that's the MP10, the Monoprice MP10, using a one millimeter nozzle. I printed very fast because I just want another example for you. And in this case, these are just printed as separate components. You slide them together and they recommend using a piece of filament. You can see here, this is a piece of printer filament to um, put the hinge together. So you would slide the filament through here. Then you could trim it off to the right size and either use a soldering iron to melt it a little bit on the end so it doesn't come out or put a drop of glue. So a box that can open and close. Now, two of my favorite boxes are these two boxes here. These are printed also on the Prusa. 
they were printed in TPU. TPU is a flexible filament. You can see it easily on this example here. You can see me twisting it all about. When you have flexible uh, phone cases, they're often made out of TPU. And this has what's called a living hinge. A living hinge is just where you have a very thin layer of plastic that bends because it's a flexible filament. This is a very nice box. You could pin boxes like this for eyeglasses. Uh, you could store needles in them, something else. Now, here's an example of a box that failed. So this was printed in traditional PLA. Um, however, it, because it was printed very small and the tolerances, now the clearances on the hinge were not large enough, the spacing of the hinge and the tolerance of the printer wasn't tight enough. That means how accurately can it hit the exact same space every time? You can see this fuse, and when I went to open it, the actual box broke. So this was a failed print. Now, one of my favorite prints, and I'm gonna show you this on Thingiverse, are these little um, containers that could be used for a variety of items. These are perfect for paper clips, for safety pins, um, for a lot of items around your home. Okay, now we're gonna take a quick look at the computer screen and you'll see we're in the website Thingiverse and I'm going to search for box. It's come back with a whole range of boxes. We could take any one of these boxes in any shapes However, perhaps we don't want exactly the size that's available here on the screen. We'd like to customize the size to fit our space. So on the left hand side, if you go to customize and click that, you'll see your screen will refresh and there will be less items shown on the screen. So I'm going to go to one of these items. Um, here's a fully customizable box that's this box right here. We will click on that item now. And you'll notice there's an option here called Open in Customizer. You'll also notice that it says this is an open SCAD part. We'll explain what open SCAD is in a minute, but you really won't have to do anything with that but it's an interesting technology, so I'll explain how it works so you understand how the customizer works in a minute. Let's click on Open in Customizer, and we'll let the screen refresh. Now, unfortunately, there's a bug in Customizer. It's supposed to show you over on the side here always a picture of what you're customizing. That doesn't always show up, at least not on my computer. But let's take and make this box 50 millimeters long, I'm sorry, 50 millimeters wide instead of 100. And uh, let's make the corners uh, a little bit less round. And you'll see that we've now designed a box. But uh, let's go to box sections. Let's say we only want to have um, two sections by one section. Uh, we'll go down here to lid and we'll make the lid height a little bit higher. Let's make this two by two and see if it will display. There we go. So now we have two by two. We can actually move this around on the screen a little bit change the way we look at it. So to create the actual model, you click on Create Thing. You give it a name. Uh, we'll call this the um, two by two box. We're not going to publish it. Let's leave it private for right now. And click on Create Thing. Now, you can go back and create another thing, or you can go to your queue. The queue is a list of items that you've created with the customizer. You can see which ones are working and which ones are done. 
When they're done, you can click on View Thing. And you can see we are now ready to download this item and print it on any printer. So how does this all work? Well, if we go back to um, one of our items and we say we're going to customize it again, you'll see there's a box here for view source. We click on that and we see something that looks like a programming language. Now this is a somewhat a complex example and we may be used to using a program like um, Tinkercad or Fusion 360 or OpenCAD in order to model, build models that we're then going to print. However, underneath those programs is math. And this programming language called OpenSCAD effectively presents the math in a programming environment so you can enter it directly. Let me show you a very simple example because it's fascinating. Not something we may all want to do every day, but it's fascinating to learn about it. So I'm going to open up now the OpenSCAD, OpenSCAD application. Here you can see all of the different functions, the programming statements you can use in it. Let's go back to the program. And here's a very simple program. That says we want a red cube that's 10 by 10 by 10, and it's built from the center out we want a yellow sphere that seven has a radius of seven, so that would mean it has a diameter, diameter of 14. And it's a union, they're combined together. We could change this, let's say I change this to black and redisplay it, and it changes to black. We could make the um, sphere a little bigger redisplay it, and you'll see the sphere is now covering most of the box. Let's put this back to seven and this back to yellow in our very simple example. Now, what if we wanted to cut out a spherical section inside our box? Well, instead of using a union, we could say a difference. And now we have a box and you can, can rotate these like you would in a traditional CAD program that has an open inside. The customizer in Thingiverse uses the OpenSCAD language and allows you to replace the numbers we've typed in with variables or inputs. So when we are customizing an item, these are just parameters to this program you can see here parameters to the program that are used to create that particular shape. Okay, um, I found this a very interesting subject to cover with you. Uh, we covered how to use Thingiverse to just find boxes, the idea of printing these. We looked at different materials. This is TPU, which is very flexible. Um, this was printed at a larger nozzle size, so it's very, very strong. Printed fast, but sort of ugly. Uh, this was printed on our Prusa um, in traditional Hatchbox PLA. And um, this small model here was printed in Hatchbox PLA in white on our Ender 5. So you can see you can use any printer at any price point to create these wonderful objects you can use to organize your life. Thanks so much for watching. If you learned something, please give me a thumbs up. Leave some comments about things you're doing to help organize your life using 3D printing. Uh, maybe it's an idea for a future video. Subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more videos from me. Thanks, let's continue to learn things together. <laughs>